In this third video on pulse width modulation, I'm going to show you now how to calculate the load time or the off time of a, of a specific given uh, duty cycle. In video number one, it was shown to you what exactly pulse width modulation means. In video two, I said I take the assumption of 100 Hz, and then I've shown you how to calculate a formula, how to get to a, a specific formula to get uh, uh, to calculate your high time once you've got the duty cycle. That duty cycle was uh, derived from making use of an ADC, uh, which is connected to an 8051, and a 255 output from the ADC will actually translate to a 100% duty cycle. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to calculate the load time, in other words, then. And um, then we will also go over to the program. So let us uh, go to the program or not the program, let us just look at the calculation first and then we can work from that point further. So this load time will now be 75, 000, sorry, uh, 7,500 microseconds. This is from a duty cycle of 25% and which means your off time will now be 75% and this actually is from the duty cycle. If the duty cycle, I'm again using the, the duty cycle example of 25%, which means it's 100% minus 25. That's what's giving us the 75. And that actually means then 7,500 microseconds. That's the total time. So this is where we got that calculation from. So I've got my delay here. That is known to me at this stage, of course, because the delay is 7,500 microseconds. And I know one machine cycle time is 1,0851 microseconds and also uh, the count uh, should now be calculated what is the start well how many counts is needed to get this delay so again using the same formulas that's the the delay that i'm requiring divided by the machine cycle time and again the microseconds cancels out here and that translates then it works out to be 6911 so my start uh, start point will then be, of course, the 65535 minus 6911, and that works out to be 58624, 58,624. And if I look at the the values here, which is the hexadecimal value, that means E5 will must be loaded into timer high zero, and 00, zero must be loaded into timer low zero. Once you've loaded that into your timer of your specific device. Uh, the 8051, then it will give me a delay at the end of the day of 7,500 microseconds. And this this is just the general formula. So let's quickly look at how do I calculate then or derive uh, at a general formula for your load time. This is what we started off with. That's 6911. Uh, this is, this is the, the number of counts. And that was actually got from 75 or 7500 divided by that 1,085 and we know that the the that 00, zero there the 100 this is the two zeros there and that 75 we received that from the the duty cycle which was 100 minus the 25 that is the two duty cycle and we then also said but what we can do then is I'm taking this 100 and that 100 gives me this uh, 10,000 divided by 1,085 on this side minus the duty cycle times that 100 also divided by 1,085. So that works out to be a number of 65,535 minus this 9,216. And we also know that the duty cycle, again, we got that from the ADC multiplied by the certain scaling factor. Uh, that 100 sitting there is still this 100 sitting here. So the final formula is this 56, because if I take the 65 minus that 9216, it gives me 56319. And this minus and then minus gives me a plus. So the only unknown value here is the ADC value. So once I read the ADC on my 8051, I actually determine what should be um, the duty cycle. And this then translates to what will be your high time and what will be your low time. So this calculation in this third video is all about your low time. So let's now go to 
the program which I have written and I have also got here let me just show you here I have also we will uh, work we will come to this lat later on but um, this is the development board that we're using at Swan University of Technology uh, I suppose I can just close this for now this is the, the, the our development board um, this year what you see on the right hand side this is the the input to the ADC it's a variable resistance from 0 to, to 5 volt uh, going into this ADC 0804 and should this be at maximum 5 volt that means your duty cycle should of course be 100% um, so yes we will get back to to this one just now let's go and look at the program in our case we make use of the Kyle Kyle U vision and um, the few the first few year if I can just quickly go back to let's start at the main year this is just activating timer zero interrupt uh, I'm using mode one the 16-bit timer because I want as soon as this thing this timer rolls over I would prefer um, to go into the interrupt service routine and then once I get out of there the new value the start value should be loaded so I don't want to make use of the 8-bit value uh, or the 8-bit mode uh, because that has got the auto reload mode so this is why I've done that this is just starting the timer here and um, just for an initial start point I'm starting somewhere so the first one will be totally out that's uh, the first one is not going to be really functional but as from there the first time that there's a rollover uh, it will start with the, with the correct values I've also just created a few uh, I've created a few variables here the most important one maybe at this stage is this uh, a bit which is called status and that is just uh, indicating to me what what happened if it is a zero if status is a zero it indicated to me that I was in the zero output state and if it's a one it means it I was in the out, I was in the high output state so in this specific uh, design you will see I'm going to make use of P1.0 I'm going to make that high or low um, but yeah so if I look at this section here this is just this is reading the ADC in our specific device our it's sitting at address 4000 this is why I'm using uh, address 4000 here and we've also connected uh, the interrupt from the ADC to P3.3 um, so if you look at that um, that high time um, which I calculated in video number two this is basically exactly what we've got the only difference is the formula worked out to be 36 comma 144 but um, I'll show you now why I'm using 36144 divided by 1000 I'm, I'm going to show that to you now uh, in the, especially in the in the low so here I'm basically loading timer uh, or loading some variables to store uh, what should be the starting point in this second section here I am this is again the formula um, well the real formula that I've shown you how to calculate it is actually this one and if you look at this one um, you will see at this stage this is the formula that is active at this stage it's giving exactly the same as this but I just want to show you that if you use this formula uh, the code is 608 bytes of code if if I change this and I go to this float and I bolt this thing again you'll see that all of a sudden the code is 1318 so Kyle is very uh, inefficient uh, when it starts using floats and this is only the student version which this is why I'm saying so I'm losing quite a lot of memory here and this is but this is just a, a workaround all I need to do is just uh, and this is also why I've made use because as soon as you start multiplying with a large value you can get out of the range of the variable and this is why I have basically um, if you look at I've declared a lot of these things as long uh, which is a 32-bit value and the 32 then can cope with that it's just uh, a just nice workaround 
to rather do this than to make use of a float here. Okay, again, I have basically stored, I saved with that. I saved the value that should go into timer low zero and timer high zero. And I've stored them in this start point low TL zero and start point low TL, TH zero. Okay. I think in the next video, or rather in the next video, explain to you further the operation. So I'm just going to stop here and then I'm going to do a, a video number four. Good. Thank you.